After nearly five months, a wave of terror on the eastern shore is over. State police say they caught the people who set the majority of the fires to abandon buildings across Accomack County. Officers arrested 40 year old Tanya Bundick, seen here, and her boyfriend, 38 year old Charles Smith III, a former firefighter. They were arrested minutes after an arson last night at a vacant home on Airport Drive. That fire was just a few miles away from Bundick's home in Parksley. This is such a big story. We devoted live team coverage to bring you every angle. Andy Fox and Ann McNamara are both at the Accomack County Sheriff's Office, where a news conference ended a short time ago. Andy, we start with you. Well, we wanted to get an interview with both of the suspects, but they declined our request. They are both charged with arsony, or with arson and conspiracy to commit arson, and will be in court tomorrow afternoon at 1:30. They will also be charged with the additional cases of arson, up to 77 that have taken place in this county. They are both remaining in jail without bond, and it appears as though these rash of arsons may be finally solved. After 77 arsons, nearly five months of terror, state police say Tanya Bondick and Charles Smith, whose alias is Charles Applegate, are responsible for a majority of the fires in abandoned or vacant buildings. We are confident that these two individuals are responsible for the majority of those fires. Um, and based on the evidence we've been able to collect over time and through this morning, we've been able to determine there's probably about a handful that were set for other motives. Uh, unrelated to Smith and Bundick. The arrest warrant says Bondick drove this minivan. You can still see the evidence tape on it. You can see where police dusted for prints. She waited in the van and dropped off Smith. State police say Smith then set the fire and then Bondick picked him up. And it is at that moment, at the corner of Airport Drive and Route 13, that they were busted. And the arson mystery may have come to an end. Now this is really just the beginning of the end. As we move from the search and stop mode, so to speak, we're moving into the investigative analysis and a prosecutorial process. And there are a lot of unanswered questions in this case. How did this go on for so long? I've been going over some of my notes from the news conference, which went on for about a half hour. I want to run through a couple of things. Police would not talk about motives or investigative techniques. They won't say what they found in the couple's minivan. There was no contact from the couple with investigators during the arson spree going back to November. And there was a word and some names, uh, some graffiti, NARC, that were found at the fire scenes and also at other places in the county. When I was out at the couple's home, there was actually the word NARC on the next door neighbor's mailbox. And so they will be investigating that as well, the tie to NARC, to these fires. They would not go into any details but about what they found. But that is the latest here, just tying up some loose ends from the news conference. State police, of course, greatly relieved that this might finally be over. But you know what, you're asking the question, could there be another fire tonight? In Accomack County, Andy Fox, 10 on your side. Let's hope not. Our live team coverage of the arson arrest continues with 10 on your side's Ann McNamara. And Ann, what are people in the community saying about the couple arrested? Well, what they've been saying since the fire started was who could be doing this? They must be slick. They must be smart. They must be experienced. And the people who knew this couple say they didn't think they were capable of pulling it off. Accomack County is large in size and small in communities like Hopeton, where Tanya Bundick lived with her fiance, Charlie Smith. Pretty shocked. She was a, a nice girl. I, I thought a lot of Tanya and her family. I'm very shocked. Neighbors say the couple also lived with Bundick's two children from a previous relationship. Many nights they could be seen sitting around a bonfire in the backyard. Fire set in these barrels. Some say it was a fascination. Others thought nothing of it. The only thing they got is a fire barrel back there. That's it. That's the only thing I see them starting fires on is a fire barrel. I mean, that's common around here. I mean, you know, people, they burn sticks and, you know, stuff like that. I got a real burn pile back in my place, too. November. Hindsight's 2020, but I'm not going to comment too much on that. That's for the police to in say. Police say Bundick drove this gold minivan to the scene of an arson last night. They say Smith jumped out to set the fire. Arson number 77 since November. How surprised are you? Very, because they're usually home at night. I don't see them going out 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Serial arsonists by night, seemingly normal by day. Smith worked at his father's auto repair shop and ran an auto shop of his own across the street. 
Bundick ran a clothing store under that same roof. They were a couple who shared a dark secret. The question is, did anyone else know? This is the answer we got from Smith's father. I have no comment. Do you know anything about it? I have no comment. Not, nothing at all? Nothing. Do you think it has anything I have no comment. Please don't do this, okay? Police say they are confident they have the two people responsible. They are confident there are not any more. So tonight, Accomack County, you can turn off your scanners. Live in Accomack, I'm Ann McNamara, 10 on your side. And continue to count on 10 on your side and wavy.com for the best coverage of the Eastern Shore fires. Only 10 on your side was at a number of those fires as they happen. Wavy.com also has had exclusive extra content since the first fire broke back in late November. You can log on to find maps, a timeline on a slideshow. Click on a special section at the top of the homepage again on wavy.com.